I have seen hundreds of people solving hundreds of questions on lead code but still struggling with their interviews. Whenever question gets submitted, it gets accepted, we are just so happy that we move on to the next question. It's not just reading the question, but it's reading through the lines. Hey everyone, this is Eshwara Mahapatra and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I will be discussing about how I use lead code in the most efficient way to land multiple offers in just a few months. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first let's talk about why do you even need to solve lead code? I mean, you might argue that I do questions on code forces or code chef, then why do I even need to visit lead code, right? But here's the thing. Even if you do a lot of competitive programming, at some point of time, you will have to visit lead code and similar sites for your interview preparations. And lead code specifically, because lead code is one of the best resources for interview preparations, and you simply can't deny the fact. So if you haven't started doing lead code yet, just start the grind right now. Now here's this very popular question. What should I do first? Should I go with solving problems topic wise or should I go with solving the problems randomly? So I would suggest that you should always try to do the questions randomly because what happens is if you um, watch the tag of any particular question beforehand, your approach, your thought process is quite restricted to only that data structure or algorithm. However, when I started first, I didn't use this approach because I didn't have my concepts clear. There are a lot of concepts that I needed to prepare for. There was binary search, there was heap, there was again, you know, dynamic programming, graphs, trees, and a lot of other stuff. I had no idea about these concepts. So I need to first practice these concepts thoroughly. And when I'm in a state to, you know, think about all these data structures and algorithms, only then I'm able to solve the random question, right? That's why what I did was I first took one of the topics, maybe binary search, all right, and then fix some time, maybe 10 to 15 days. And I solved most of the binary search questions. And in the initial days, I used to uh, solve the easy problems and then medium problems and not hard problems, right? Similarly, um, once I felt confident in that particular topic, I would go to the other topic, right? In this way, within uh, like two, three months, I actually used to solve a lot of questions every day. That's why within two, three months, I was in a state of, uh, you know, solving random questions. But it's not necessary for you to complete within two, three months. You can take your time. Maybe after five, six months, you can choose questions randomly and uh, solve with your own approach, right? So let me take you to my screen and I'll tell you how you can choose the questions tag wise and randomly. As you can see that in this uh, particular, you know, interface, you can see these are some tags. So we'll expand it and there are a ton of tags. So uh, what I would say is always prefer to go with uh, the tags, right? Which have the most number of questions. That means, you know, uh, simply more questions have been asked from these topics in the interview. So you can always start choosing the topics with more number of questions. Now, to uh, choose random questions, you can use uh, this feature, pick one. And uh, whenever you choose pick one, it shows you a random question, completely random question that you can simply solve. All right. Now you know that there are so many questions on lead code. Currently, there are 2,076 questions on lead code and it's just going to increase with every contest. So uh, you might have a question that how do I even choose the good questions, right? Which question to solve, which question not to solve. So here I have a few strategies for you, which will actually help you choose good questions to solve. Okay, so my first strategy is always start solving questions from the easiest to the hardest. What I mean from this is, so say I choose the string topic. So within this, you can uh, see these features, right? So frequency is actually logged and it is solely for the premium users. So you can use the other two, right? 
uh, now you can uh, simply click on to this two times to sort it from the easiest to the hardest right now one more thing that within uh, you know uh, every uh, difficulty level as well you see there is this acceptance rate right so the one which has more acceptance rate is definitely uh, the easier one right and the one which is having less acceptance rate is the harder one okay my second strategy is looking at the likes to the dislike ratio okay so what you can do is in whatever question you find that the like to dislike ratio is worse than two is to one you're going to definitely avoid that question but when you see a question with a like ratio like to dislike ratio four is to one or better that is a must to questions. So I'll show you a small example of the questions I'm talking about that you should definitely solve. Okay. So this is one of the questions as you can see on my screen where the like to dislike ratio is much, much better than four is to one. Okay. So this is a must to question. And as you can see this question, this question has more dislikes than likes. So you should definitely avoid these kind of questions. Wait a second. Before going ahead, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Also check out the last video that I uploaded on how I crack Goldman Sachs interviews and my whole preparation strategy. So you know how to kickstart your coding journey? Good. You also know how to choose good questions? Even better. But does that still guarantee you success? I mean, I have seen hundreds of people solving hundreds of questions on lead code but still struggling with their interviews. What's the reason? Because they simply don't follow the four step method for the best lead code outcome. So let's discuss those four steps. First step is read the question properly. I know it might seem obvious, but it's not just reading the question, but it's reading through the lines. What I mean from this is, when you are reading the question, try to build a vague approach already in your mind. Try to think about the possible data structures or algorithms that you should be considering. Now, the second step is working on the problem. So what you should do is whenever you look at a problem, think about the approach for 20 to 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, if you're still not able to figure out the approach, then go to look for your first hint. Then think for the next 10 minutes. If you're still not able to figure out the solution, then go to look for the second hint and think for another five minutes because by now you should be able to figure out the solution. But if you're still not able to figure out the solution, then you should straight go to the solutions and check out the solution. In case lead code has provided you the solution, you should check out lead code solution. Otherwise, go to the discuss section then to the most votes section where you will find uh, the solutions which have been mostly voted. Okay, then you can check the top two to three uh, solutions, mark that question, okay, come back later and revise it. Then the third step is to review the recommended solution. Even if you have solved the solution, you should be reviewing the recommended solution. So just go through the recommended solution and if it matches your thought process, your solution, well and good. However, if that's not the case, look at what data structures did the actual solution used? Was there any specific algorithm? Was there something within the question that actually hinted towards this solution? Right. And also try to think about, uh, you know, what was the exact point where your thoughts diverged from the actual solution. This constructive review should be your goal because this is going to help you in the long run. Now, the final step is to look for alternative solutions. What we generally do is whenever a question gets submitted, it gets accepted. We are just so happy that we move on to the next question because what else is needed after all, right? But this is where we all fail. There is a huge possibility that there definitely exists a solution that is much, much better than ours. It can be in terms of time complexity or space complexity. So spare some time 
to go to the discuss section look for the most voted solutions and try to analyze what's better in their solution having these kind of alternative solutions will definitely help you during the interviews so talking about lead codes contest so generally what happens is lead code always uh, you know organizes weekly contests every sunday right and bi weekly contests which is every alternate saturday so uh, the lead code contests are not very long and they are generally 1.5 hours okay so if you uh, closely look at it your time investment every week is going to be just 2 to 3 hours which is again not a big time investment so you simply shouldn't miss the lead code uh, contest however if you really really want to uh, land that good job your dream job i would suggest you to uh, give uh, the contest more regularly right so you can use lead codes virtual contest feature where uh, it simulates you know the uh, environment of real contest right and it's again just like a real interview where uh, the interview asks you questions and you have to solve it within a stipulated time period right this way you can actually increase your coding frequency to every alternate day or every two days now lead code is releasing new features every now and then including study plans like two weeks to tackle ds or the ultimate dp study plan now you might have a question that isn't it just easy to pick up a study plan and start solving questions uh, within that particular study plan because after all it's meticulously curated why do i even need to go and figure out which question is good and which question is not i would say when you're just starting off follow the strategy to choose a good question as i suggested you earlier right and then keep solving questions keep polishing your concepts now just before the interviews maybe one to two months earlier you should look at uh, the you know interview questions list on lead code okay you can find it in the explore section because it's a really really good list and i personally have benefited from it okay now why i don't suggest you to start with any list while you're just starting off is because uh, you get restricted to a certain number of questions and you don't get uh, an exposure to variety right so you definitely can use these lists or study plans later on to brush up your con uh, concepts but uh, don't use it when you're just uh, starting with the journey now look i cannot tell you a perfect study plan that's going to work for you okay all i can do is suggest you one on the basis of my personal experience so you have to work on your study plan so please don't laze around on this so these were my top ways to use lead code that helped me land amazing offers within just a few months however there are still many features of lead code that you might be unaware of so if you want a video on that do comment down below if you like my video don't forget to hit that like button subscribe to my channel i'll meet you in the next video till then bye bye